Chapter 17. It was difficult to make out exactly what was happening in New York City, but a large blur of a figure was moving at great speeds, converging with vehicles, buildings, and the ground, and generally wreaking havoc on 125th Street in Harlem. The destruction was more widespread than it had been earlier. There was more rubble and smoke everywhere. And now, for the first time, a camera fixed itself in the face of of the monster causing the chaos. An ugly blue-gray thing, about 15 feet tall, judging its height compared to the nearby lampposts, looked like a bulging mass of twisted muscle and overgrown bones. Its hands and legs were enormous, each about the size of a tree trunk, and though its head was small as compared to the rest of it, it had a terrifying rep- reptilian-like quality that made, a, made it no less intimidating than uh, 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 the rest of the creature. The spikes that, that protruded from its spine did nothing to soften the look of this thing. The creature balled its fists, lifted its head, and let out a vicious growl. Suddenly, a bright green beam shot out of the sky toward the monster, followed by a thunderous impact. What was the government doing? Nuking the thing with gamma rays now? The green flash was not a nuke, or any other kind of missile. It was another big ugly thing. This one was green in head hair and was in no way as grotesque and distorted as the one tearing up the city. But the ugly monsters were not fighting together. They were fighting each other. The big green one pummeled the ugly one straight down 125th Street and it left a ditch of the asphalt where it skid. A ticker at the bottom of the screen read, Crowds described rampaging beasts as an abomination. The abomination grabbed the green beast and threw him into a building, which crumbled around him. The green beast didn't even need a minute to, re- to uh, re- recover and burst from the rubble uh, as if from water. It, it leaped in the air and soared at a great distance to land on the abomination, and the two continued to wrestle. Now the ticker read, Hulk appears to have upper hand. The two giants face each other, hunched in ready stances, prepared to attack. Both lunged at the same time, and they collided in midair. The impact created a disturbance that shattered windows as far as ten blocks away. The beasts continued to attack each other. Then a helicopter, looking very small compared to the larger-than-life scene unfolding below, began to pelt the abomination with bullets. The abomination jumped on top of a roof, and the copter flew in, attempting to achieve more effective fire at closer range. The abomination grabbed a 10-foot girder from the roof's water tower. He ripped it out, scattering its rivets on the ground. Then he launched the girder into the air as evenly as an ordinary man might throw a spear. It clipped the helicopter's rear rotor, and the aircraft started whirling out of control and spiraling toward Earth. The Hulk took the opportunity to... to, uh, to uh, re-engaged the uh, um, abomination and the two continued to battle. The copter crashed into the ground and the news cameras caught people escaping. A woman ran out of the chopper and tore the scene of the fight. The Hulk roared as the woman approached. The abomination tore from the ground two marble posts connected by a chain using them as bullets. The woman continued to approach. She seemed to be calling out to the Hulk. She must have been in shock. The Hulk raised his arms, and his veins and muscles bulged and pulsed. The Hulk smashed his hands into the ground, and, and it opened up, creating a great chasm into which his adversary fell. The Hulk moved toward him, and then finished off the abomination. The Hulk saw to it that the woman was safe, and then bounded off into the New York City night. The Hulk was gone, and the abomination had been defeated.